Welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. My name is Neil Lars and I'll be your guide on this walkthrough Let's Play guide tutorial series for Oxygen Not Included. I'm so happy that uh, I've returned to it and I'm so happy that you are supporting this journey and enjoying these episodes. So I'll just reiterate how these uh, episodes are going to work. I'll be covering around 50 cycles of uh, progress and then I'll have one thing that I'm going to be highlighting and go a bit more into detail. So there's also sort of a tutorial aspect to it and not just sort of then I built this, then I built that, but also not uh, just tutorials because it's also like the progress of how I solve different things even though they're not necessarily big enough to be uh, interesting in and of themselves. So let's uh, get started. Uh, we are smashing away up here. Uh, we are going to keep smashing. There we go. Let's just bump up the priority. And all the way up here we have a cool salt slush geyser. So that makes brine. And this is a metal refinery. Uh, we've been refining metal through this one the rock crusher but every time we use it the rock crusher it will use lose half of the input so 100 kilos in 50 kilos out that's pretty bad and pretty wasteful so we're going to do that in order to get our power up here it'll be a need to get all the way up and we need to replace that uh, then i have am bringing in some water from here uh, that goes in and maybe it works uh, these belts with pipes back and forth they are a bit convoluted but the idea is i build a reservoir here of a very cold water uh, that is now oh, 25 degrees that's not so super cold then i'll be bringing it into this uh, this one here the metal refinery do we have water in here yes we do 25 degree hot water and we have some gold amalgam uh, that is getting ready but i've disabled it and then this will generate a lot of heat and that's why I put it in a cold biome. So the very easy thing when you build your first metal refinery, you need water. Make sure that you don't have too much water because the water will increase a lot in temperature or let the too hot water. So don't put like 60 degree hot water because then it might boil and break the pipes. <clears throat> but I place it in here because it's generating a lot of heat. Also a kiln uh, is kind of used. The kiln is used for making um, the lime. No, uh, letting carbon refined coal and we need refined coal for steel and we do need steel eventually so that is a a good step forward what i do here is just let all the stuff that just uh, dissipates the stuff that comes out of the cool slush geyser and just dissipate down here and then we pump it we'll then filter it into the brine goes here and um, the clean water goes down there and the wastewater goes the pee water goes over here so just basically uh, just sorting out different things and it should be working quite well so the main topic for today will be about ranches. I built these silly, uh, these simple ranches, not silly ranches. These are very, very basic. They fit to my city block pattern. You can see here the 16 tiles. And if we look at the location, yes, they will be stables. Stables can be maximum size is 96, but this one is only 64 tiles. So if we really want, that means I can't have as many in here. I can have a maximum of five and uh, I need to make sure that I get rid of everything else, such as the hatchling eggs. And each of them will have a grooming station, a critter feeder, and a drop-off. So there's not really a good uh, scale here. Also, there's this problem that when they drop, when they poop stuff, uh, or when they lay eggs, then they can do that everywhere. And I really want to be able to use my automatic shipping here. These auto sweeper, my absolute favorite thing in the whole game, auto sweepers. Uh, I want to make sure that I can use those. Yeah, starvation. That's just someone and in, in, got stuck in the toilet. I'm sure, right? Yeah, it's always. Hey, solid bond. You're starving because you're stuck in the toilet. That's not really something you need to. Uh... <laughs> well, I mean, you got to manage your inputs and outputs. So what I want to do is I want to go over here and uh, start cleaning out this area because here I can actually make a bigger location, and that will be if I can make it 24. So like that, 24, then I can make a much better design for my uh, my hatches here. And uh, that's going to be the next big thing that we want to do. So now we've dug out all of this area over here. And uh, that has a much nicer location and size. So let's have a look at how I built this. Uh, this is built in a very specific way. And uh, I really uh, like this way of doing it. I'm making it the absolute minimum amount of space that they they need to walk back and forth the reason why i'm doing that is because first of all when uh, we come in here for the grooming station and call them then we don't have to wait very long until they actually get here so it's kind kind of convenient or quite convenient uh the other thing is that anywhere they drop their stuff they can only walk back and forth here 
they will actually be uh, in range of the sweeper and I don't need many sweepers to, to cover this area. So that's super, uh, super nice. Uh, we also make sure that we have, see, there we go. Look how quick they, uh, they come in here. Perfect. And they will now go back and forth. Uh, I need to put a door. So they, my dupes can't go in here, but uh, an automatic door that biters will not, or um, hatches will not cross those. And then one above, otherwise they will jump up and jump on the other side. But if I make it all the way up, then it becomes this little room. But all of this is one room in in and of itself. It is the maximum size, 96 tiles. I just had to little, little dot here and cut this off so that it fits the perfect maximum size. And that's basically the way that I uh, built these. Uh, it gets more advanced as well, uh, if I could just do that. Um, but this super uh, easy to make. That one, and I'll just get this one up here, and I'll get here. Then we'll have on this line. That will just be for anything that we pick up. I'm indiscriminately picking up anything. I'm not even caring about whether it's... Um, uh, it's eggs, or it's coal, or it's eggshells, or whatever it is, or meat when they die. It's just anything and everything gets uh, taken out there. Uh, this part will also need to be like this. And then I can just improve like that. And copy this setting up here. Very easy to make. There is one more uh, part of this that I will also be doing, but I'll do that uh, a bit later because that's the monitoring of uh, how many are in here. So we can start and stop the hatching uh, as as we need it. Um, this is here. What are we feeding them? We are currently feeding them sedimentary rock. And maybe at some point we'll feed them something else. You can see the sun here. It says it's, the room is too big, but now it doesn't say the room is too big. Now it actually says it's perfect size. Great. So we now have a perfect size room here. And this takes forever to make, but eventually it'll get there. There. And I'll copy the settings here. And this is basically just taking, well, organic, the eggshells, which is not really happening, and then any egg that we could get there, or and also the coal as well. So that is how we do it. I'm going to be building a lot more of these as we clean out this area, and then uh, we can recoup this area and uh, and start moving the biters. I uh, <coughs> keep calling that. They move the hatches over there. Uh, this is seven, and I'll to, re I'll to take anything else. I'll just set this to zero, and then I'll to wrangle anything else. I should just mark it as uh, outer angle, so they will be moved over to this location. So that's working pretty well. If we look at what we also did before, then we have up here. This is now our our um, refining. It's just working. It's slowly chucking along. I'm making sure that we also have the possibility to put in a reservoir here. Uh, I did make a mistake, which is uh, kind of obvious with the way I do things. Uh, I'm taking the excess from here. This is the hot water and taking it down here. Unfortunately, this hot water used to be pee water. So what happens is I now have food poisoning in all my water supply. That's kind of unfortunate. Um, eventually, I'll need to get some other supplies, but not right now. Uh, over here, we just have slow. Uh, I'm not using the penny power for this because we're having plenty of that. I also want to gradually transition into having stone hatches. So uh, let's uh, take a look at we go a bit further with this part as well. And as we're progressing here, we are seeing that we are adding more hatches here. Look at that. Populating this with hatches. And uh, we have also built another one. And this one is a Swedel farm, or it's basically both a grub fruit plant farm. Because grub fruits are super good plants, except that they are pretty bad unless they get fertilized by these Swedels or grub grubs. So what we need to do is we need to have these Swedels here running around inside and then also managing this. So that means this will be both a Swedel farm and also a... Um, uh, a grub fruit farm. Grub fruits, if we find some gruf, some wild grub fruits out here, I don't know if I even have anything left, any wild grub fruits left out there. I don't think so because I kind of went out hunting for them. Um, yeah, here you can see that they are spindly grub fruit plant. They are not particularly good. Uh, grub fruit seed and if it's tended with diverting critter, it will produce a high quality fruit instead. So that's what we want. See, 800 uh, for a spindly grub fruit. And let's see it. We don't see what it actually turns into until we get that one. That's a grub fruit plant. And we can see this uh, gives 2000. So definitely a better thing to uh, to to deal with here. Uh, I'll just be making the next one down here. 
keep expanding our setup for, uh, for hatches because we need as much as possible. Right, so now we have this and uh, these will gradually convert into making grub grub eggs. Grub grubs are big worms that are so much better. So uh, both more meat and better buff here because they give like a little buff that's sweet attending that gives plus 5% growth speed. But the other one gets 50% growth speed. I can't remember. The grub grubs are super better, super lot better. So we need to get the grub fruits instead. Now, what we need to do now is we have kind of automated the export here. So when they shit some coal, then uh, they'll be going out. But also when they lay an egg, that will also be going out. That means we have a lot of eggs somewhere in the system. Eggs. Uh, we have a lot of hatching. Well, six hatching eggs, but nine, nine stone hatching eggs. That's great. We definitely want that. So now we need to make two things. We need to make an automatic hatcher. And that only works when it's necessary. And we need to make an automatic kill room. And this kill room, there are many like it, but this one's mine. And it takes absolutely no effort. Almost. So, um, watch. And uh, this is my specialty, kill room. So, I'm going to build something over here. And uh, this will be my uh, little kill room. Here. And I'll be making a... So the way that it works is a kill room is that we just put eggs in here and once the eggs stay in here, we'll lock this door so the eggs can't get out. And then when they hatch, they will be underwater and drown and then turn into meat. That's horrible, but that's kind of, uh, yeah. Uh, industrialized meat production is horrible. So uh, might as well accept that. You don't want to know how the Sausage is made. I guess that's kind of the essence of it. And we'll be getting a line in here because we need to drop those out. Good. So uh, let's build this part and you will be taking just regular old water here and get it high and remember to enable the auto bottler. Otherwise it does not work. And then I also need to make some incubators here, here and here. And then we need the reason why I'm building it this specific way is because as I build this, it can reach the three. It can reach all three of those locations, uh, the incubators, and it can reach exactly down in that corner. That's why I have to make it in that uh, off distance here. And uh, not enough water to drown them, so we keep feeding this. Uh, this will be making sure that we grab stuff from here. And any eggs will always be stored here. And if one of these is empty, then it will put the egg in here. But if it's not empty, then it'll just be stuck underwater. When they hatch, they'll die. There'll be some things that we can pick up. And uh, the things we can pick up, I will just uh, make that here. And let's see. Hmm. I think we want to make a jump over that via bridge. There. Uh, actually, I'd, I'd rather have it the other way around. That one here. Uh, this will go back and this will be input. There we go. That is the trash line which goes back to our global storage. I will be focusing on how the global storage works in the next episode. Don't, don't worry if you really want to see that. Well, you're going to watch the next episode. But I don't want to have too many things in the same episode. So global storage will be in the next because it's infinite and self-sorting it just has many many cool keywords so here i'm going to select the stone hatchling incubate here copy settings there and there um and what i then want to do this one has to fill up i will now be locking this one this is complete printables available all those things now this is locked so no one can accidentally get in or out from this location we're going to wait for the water to flow down here. Uh, okay, it's only when this one gets full. Oh, no. Really? That's interesting. I can deconstruct that then. All right, let's... So this one, what are we going to have here? We are going to have... And if I rebuild this again... I'm just going to check to see if it pushes more to the side than up. Should be pushing. There we go. You need to just stop now. That works brilliant. And there we go. None of that. And we can even deconstruct it. And I'll lock that one again. Great. So, stuff that comes out here. 
And let's see. Yeah, that is connected. This is connected. All right. What are the things we want? Well, we do need to make sure that critter, critter eggs will not be taken out. Because then it'll just be a cooking ingredient. No, we need edible. We need... Uh, they will be dropping meat. And we will also... The other thing that they will be getting is... Oh, I can't remember where eggshells are, but eggshells are somewhere here. Cultivatable soil. It's so weird why these are... I... Right, we'll check eggshells. Miscellaneous? No. Organic? Yes. Yes, there we go. Those are the two things we want. And you can see this will be working, but we don't want everything to be working here. Okay, what we do want to do is take one of these. Because um, we... They, yeah. Oh, wow, we have a lot of uh, wrangling products here. That one. Get those wrangled and get those in here. Stone hatches, copy settings to that one and to that one. Definitely want stone hatches. We actually want to replace all of it with stone hatches. What I'm going to do now is I am going to... Because right there we have a lot of... Yeah, like this. Uh, we have a... Come on, let me just think. Sorry, I can't draw and talk at the same time. All right, in here we will have a lot of eggs, eggs as well. So you can see stone hatching eggs, all that stuff. And we don't want that there. We want all of our eggs to be automatically, no matter where they are grabbed from. So even though we grab it from here, we'll send everything back here and then we'll be shipping all of our critter eggs and nothing else on this one. And they will now be going on the belts, and they will be going up here, and then be underneath. We do have a few more things to build at this location, so make sure this has, is a room. Make sure that this is here. And uh, so that also needs to be done. I will be upgrading. Yeah. All right. And how are we doing on this part? Well, almost. You can see there are some eggs that are coming in. That's actually not a lot of eggs. Uh, it's kind of weird why we not don't have any more of the eggs. Maybe they just sweep here and sweep there. So you can see all of the coal that's left here is something that gets automatically picked up without us ever using any dupes for it. Yes, now they're coming in. It's coming in. And this will be out to wrangle everything and I want zero and all of it gets out to wrangled. There we go, right? We never want anything in here. So anytime something hatches, they will be out wrangled and put into one of these locations. Pretty damn neat, but we're not done yet. So here, we have the eggs down here. We're not done yet because if I keep doing this, they're going to be using a lot of power and they are always going to be on and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a setup so that I control how much, how long they actually are active. And I'm going to do that by having critter sensors. Um, yeah, I don't want you. Critter sensor here. Yeah, and I will get shift two. Like that. And do that, does this need? No, it doesn't need anything. All right, let's build this and then I'll show how that works. Uh, actually, we need all of these in here. For now, we're only making hatches, but we will eventually be making some other things as well. And now we built the wire connection. So let's have a look at how this actually works now. Um, now, this is going to say count the number of critters in here because there won't be any eggs. Eggs will be picked up automatically. So count the number of critters. If it is less than seven, then a green signal because less than seven means I'd like to have one more. Okay, so uh, this one has, is counting seven. So it's not less. That means this one is sending a red signal. Same with this here. This has seven. You're counting seven. This one, though, you also just got seven. Ah, come on. Okay, I'm going to have to build one more so we can see the idea of it. All right, so we built one more. And all we need to do is we need to copy the settings down here. So we can see, since there are none in here, it would send a green signal. But since they are all here, then what we can see is, since there's a red signal here, I have not connected the last one then these will stop working and therefore they'll only be incubating at their normal rate instead of at the accelerated rate because 
uh, of the incubators. So this is basically the way uh, this one will definitely be changed to a, once the Sweetle starts dropping some eggs, like that one, for example, a Grub Grub egg, then uh, we'll just be getting you out because I want to make Grub Grubs. Grub Grubs. Grub Grubs are way more important. There. And then that also means we can make the same thing in this case here. And make the same signal and just let it go up here and then control it at that location. Uh, here I have now made some sweepers so that I cover the entire area and can put things into here. So this will be actually taking... Is there anything that it shouldn't be taking? Not really. Can we just do all of it? Yeah. Sure. Just take all of it. Because whatever there is, uh, like dead things or whatever, they just clean it up. So if we now connect this part here, then the green signal will go in because the green signal always overrides the red signal. And you can see these are working again. They are incubating, incubating. Incubator is, hmm, doesn't it say why the, how fast the incubator, oh, okay. There is the egg and it's incubating plus five per cycle because of the, Oh, it's the lullaby that gets uh, incubation rate 400. That's a lot. Right, and that means we now have a fully automated build that uh, can take care of breeding new ones, taking them automatically here. When they lay an egg, it'll be going through our infinite storage and then be propped up here. If we have space for, uh, for it in these incubators, then they will go into the incubators. If not, then they will just go here. They will hatch, and as they hatch, we can see more are coming in, two sweet legs. Uh, then as they hatch, they will be, uh, they'll be turned into food. And uh, that's, yeah, that's just how it works. And in the meantime, we'll be getting all of this. We want to uh, eventually change them all from being hatchling to being stone hatchling because they can eat different types of stone and they'll just be uh, more consistent. So we'll be having a large stone farm here. We'll have a little grub, grub fruit farm and also for our grub hops, at least grub, grub grub worms. So that is basically now taking care of all of our food and all of our power because we get coal from the hatches for our power plants, the coal power plants, and we get food from uh, from the meat, both from the grub grubs, from the grub fruits, and from the hatches when they die. So that is all, and it's all fully automated. The only thing that isn't automated is the uh, the grooming here, but that is uh, totally worth it anyway. So I, th I hope that was uh, inspiring and it... Uh, was something that maybe you can set up in your own base because it is not actually that difficult to set it up. Yes, there are a few conditions you need to set up here and there, but once you've set it up with an automatic kill room, and this kill room is extremely simple, like compared to how many, uh, how complicated I've built it myself with raising and lowering levels of water and timers and all that stuff. This is so simple. So build this, It's uh, it'll serve you and it'll be automatically transferring things from left to right. So that's... Uh, Hope you enjoyed. If you do, be sure to hit the like button. It helps a lot with the visibility and especially for a, let's say, older game like this, uh, that uh, we get the visibility out there for maybe someone out there on YouTube is really missing the, some some content for <laughs> for Oxygen Not Included and don't know that I've started again. Oh my God, you are just crazy. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. So look at how happy he is. <laughs> Until next time, take care and be as effective as Everlist here.